Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today I have put together my top five tips for dads supporting their partner in labor. And let's just get into the first tip now. Number one, don't ask, just try. So what this means is try not to ask questions of your partner in labor. So if this sounds kind of strange, let me just back up a little bit and tell you about what's happening inside of your brain when you're in labor. You don't have a lot of capacity to think about things, to your rational brain almost turns off in labor. And so making decisions is really hard for a lot of people in labor. And I'm talking about easy decisions. Like if you ask someone in labor if they want a sip of water, they might get into an endless loop thinking about how much did they hydrate? Do they need to drink? When was the last time they drank? So these kind of easy questions usually can can hang people up in labor. And we really don't want that. We really want, you know, partners, dads, you want to be supportive. So what's easier is just to try something. So given the water example, instead of asking your partner, would you like a sip of water? Just have a bottle with a straw or a cup with the straw and just hand it over and say, here you go, in between contractions. That way they're not having to make a decision. They still have the ability to either choose to drink the water or not choose to drink the water, but you're not putting it out there in the form of the question, which makes it so much easier. And the thing about it is trying things, that's really the best thing you can do. You never know what's going to work, whether a counter pressure is going to work on her back, a massage might be a great idea, or making a suggestion to change positions. You really don't know, but it's better to just suggest, just try, and it's easier to lead someone in labor than to keep asking them questions. Tip number two is to be present. So this seems maybe easy. Of course, you're going to be present. Of course, you want to be there to support your partner in labor. But it can be really hard to just be present and be engaged for such a long period of time. Labor is usually hours and hours. The average first time person is in labor for 18 hours. So that's a long time to be present but it's so key. And being present means paying attention to what's going on with your partner, what's going on with the healthcare, your healthcare providers, you know, um, being aware of your surroundings, being aware of the situations, just really being engaged in what's going on. Now you're gonna need breaks and that is totally normal. And the bathroom can be a great place to take a break. You know, bring your phone, catch up on what you need to do there in the bathroom. But then when you leave the bathroom and you're back with your partner, it is really important for you to be present and engaged. Number three, I call drag a chair around. Okay, labor, I mentioned it's long. And in order to conserve your energy, it's really important that you don't get caught standing the entire time. And this is really easy. Like it is hard to remember to sit down. So many times I've walked into a labor and delivery room and seen uh, my, my couple that I'm there to support and dad is standing. And it's great. It shows that you're engaged and you're helping and you're being supportive and you're being present. But I want you to be present sitting if you can. So usually most labor and delivery rooms have some type of stool or some type of chair that is able to be moved around. So if you can be sitting and still provide great support, which is most of the time, I really want you to be sitting. And it, just drag that chair around. If your partner moves, your partner goes into the bathroom to labor in the bathroom, maybe in the shower, maybe in a tub, maybe on a birth ball, whatever, have the chair ready to go. That it's, it is the super doula secret way to maintain your energy and conserve it for as long as you can. So we are three tips in, which is a great time to hit the like button if you have learned anything from those first three tips. And I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. It is a great way to get easy access to the rest of the top five tip series that I have on the channel. Okay, so number four is to take care of yourself. Now, this is not like a selfish tip that I'm giving you. You're actually taking care of yourself so that you can be helpful for your partner after the baby arrives. What I've seen happen is that if dads and partners are not taking care of themselves, they usually do okay up until the birth of the baby. And adrenaline can really keep you running for a long, long time. 
But after the baby is there, it's almost like their body says, okay, now we're done. Now our job is done. The baby's here. Everybody's safe and healthy. And you see dads crash, like almost to the point of just laying down and falling asleep on the little couch that might be in the hospital room after their baby is born. But the thing about it is, is we need you then. Uh, Your partner needs you to pay attention to what they're telling you about the baby, how to take care of them, how to, to feed them. That's one of the most important things that happens after the baby is born. Also, all the postpartum recovery that starts for your partner and being aware of what's going on there is really important. So I want you to take care of yourself, which means make sure you're hydrating along with hydrating your partner hydrate yourself. Make sure that you have your own water glass, water cup, and that you're drinking it regularly. If you aren't visiting the bathroom regularly, of course, that's a good sign that you're not hydrating enough. Make sure that you're eating snacks along the way. You want to keep your energy, keep your fuel, and rest when you can. Of course, this goes along with number three. Number three, dragging the chair around is going to help you take care of yourself as well. But you know, it goes back to that whole saying of put your oxygen mask on first so that you can help someone else out. And it's not selfish, it's actually really important. Many times I have been working as a doula with a client and dad has said they're not gonna eat because their partner can't eat. And it's really not a good idea. These are the dads that are fainting, that are not able to take care of the baby afterwards. So super, super important. Number five, our last tip, but it doesn't mean that it is the least important. It's actually maybe one of the most important, and that is prepare. So prepare means prepare for your role, prepare for your job, prepare for labor. It is so important to have a good working knowledge of how birth works and be able to help your partner with the tools that they need to have a positive birth experience. So in my recommendation, I think you should take a childbirth class. It's really important. Winging it is not advised, both for your role and your partner's role. And it's just, it's really not possible for your partner or your healthcare provider to provide just-in-time learning about what's going on in labor. You going into labor, having a good knowledge of how it works and what you can do to make it better is just super critical and important. So if you haven't found a childbirth class that is right for you, I'm gonna put links to the ones that I teach down below. They're all online so you can do it at your own pace. I have a class called Supporting Her that's just for dads and partners, specifically for that role. And then I have a couples class called The Birth Toolbox that gives you all of the information about how birth works and fills your toolbox with skills to deal with labor. I definitely recommend preparing as an important step and one of my top five tips, of course. We got our five tips in. I'm gonna link right here to the next video in the top five series. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your partner or share it with someone else who you think might find it helpful, like a bump group. And until next time, take care. Bye, everybody.